I have a question on my mind which makes me really curious. Here I have my 2023 workstation built with like high end consumer parts. And here I have my 2013 hardware workstation which I built in 2017 with used parts. So there's 10 years in between of these systems. Hi, my name is Victor Bart and welcome to Retro Machines. And let's find out in this video how much faster 2023 hardware is in compare with 2013 hardware. Because in class of the CPU and hardware it's around the same only 10 years in between. This video is sponsored by my long term sponsor PCBWay. If you want your circuit board design realized and printed you should check out PCBWay. Starting prices as low as $5 for a one or two layer design. Check the top banner for the current promotions. Place your order now, links in the description. You can see a theme here of my <laughs> last years of computer parts. Noctua fans, Corsair power supplies, 850 watt in the Xeon, 1000 watt in the AMD. Yeah, both overkill, but they work fine. Air cooling, Asus video cards. This one has a Super Micro motherboard, and this one has an Asus motherboard. And this one has a DVD player. <laughs> both cases are fractal design because they just make really good cases for a decent amount of money. So let's first talk about the specs of the Xeon E5 2690V2 CPU, which is a 10 core CPU running at uh, 3 GHz with 3.6 turbo. It has 64 GB DDR3, 8 sticks, a uh, GTX 970 video card, and Asus Strix. I think it's a little bit overclocked card. Here we have a 10 gigabit uh, network card with uh, SFP plus modules. Here we have an extra PCI card with a 960 gigabyte uh, SSD. The motherboard is a Super Micro X9 SRA. Uh, this motherboard is a workstation motherboard, so it has sound on board, network on board, USB 3.0, two PCIe 16 slots, one eight time slot and one four time slot. And even an old uh, fashioned PCI 32-bit uh, slot. We have two SATA 600 uh, ports on the motherboard. And behind the motherboard is a 256 and then 500 gigabyte Samsung SSD on SATA. And we have of course a DVD player in this system. And double 9.2 cm fans on the CPU cooler. It's a silent system, runs great, full performance, full turbo, everything. But in the latest games like Baldur's Gate 3, I was struggling a little bit in the city itself, in Act 3, with the performance. And I already had the ID to upgrade it, so I made the step to this system now. And this one is an absolutely beast, and you will see that in the benchmark results. The CPU is an AMD Ryzen 9, the 7950X, not the X3D. I think for my video editing the X is a better option than the X3D. The base clock is 4.5 GHz per core and a turbo up to 5.7 GHz. I didn't overclock it, it's not necessary. And this system has 96 GB DDR5 with two sticks of Corsair. And that's a huge step over the PC1600 of the Xeon, because this is PC5600. So in terms of memory speed, this one is much, much faster. The motherboard is an Asus ProArt. And the nice thing about the ProArt series, it has 10 gigabit Ethernet on board, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet on board. We have two uh, Firewire. Firewire? No, not Firewire. We are not living in 2005 anymore. <laughs> we have two Thunderbolt ports, but they call it USB 4 because they, for some reason, they can't call it Thunderbolt 4. But I test out with Thunderbolt 3 dock and that works fine. And we have tons of USB. All kinds of 10 gig USBs, 20 gigs, 40 gigs. Uh, all the USB you ever want. So in terms of 
uh, connectivity. This is a huge step up over this machine. The video card is an RTX 4080 uh, from Asus ProArt, 16 gigabyte of memory. It's just amazing. It performs so well. Every game at Ultra, 440p monitors and perfection. Also complete Noctuar air cooling. It's a silent system. So let's run the benchmarks and see how much faster this AMD is over the Xeon. There's 10 years in between. Both are workstation hardware. This is real workstation hardware, but most of it used. And this one is like consumer workstation hardware. And this was a 2000 uh, euro CPU. And this is like when it came on the market a 700 euro CPU. So there's a big difference in terms of the CPUs nowadays. But yeah, let's run the benchmarks and see how much faster this machine is. The first time when I ran Cinebench R32, I was quite shocked with the results. So let's run this as the first test and see the result between the 2023 AMD versus the 2013 Xeon, both high-end systems. They started at the same time. The results are in and you might see on the screen that there's a little bit of a difference. So the AMD has a score of 36,753 and that is even 6,700 points higher than an Ryzen Threadripper with 32 cores at 3 GHz. Yeah, this is a quite fast chip. And the score of the Xeon is 7546. So the AMD is 5 times faster in Cinebench. The Heaven Benchmark 4 results are in. <laughs> the AMD smoked the Xeon with 430 frames per second versus 63. Kickbench CPU benchmark. Do I really need to talk about the results? The single core score 2900 on the AMD and the Xeon 606. And the multi-core score 19,027 versus 4,313. PCBWay has shared open source projects. Go to the tab shared projects to see all the user projects that are shared. Select a category and find something you like. For example, check out this project. Film camera remote shutter project with a Raspberry Pi Pico. PCBWay makes the PCB for this project and you get a component list and a video and a written description. So if you want to make this project, go to the link in the description. Let's run the Kickbench GPU benchmark. The Kickbench GPU benchmark on the RTX 4080. 262,202 versus the GTX 970. 28,939. Hmm, I think my new system is a little bit faster. Cinebench R24 doesn't run on the Xeon, so let's run R15 and see the difference. So the AMD is like 4 times faster in Cinebench R15. Let's do an SSD benchmark. M.2 Gen 4 versus SATA. Do I really need to talk about the difference here in performance? Or is it just clear enough that the M.2 Gen 4 is a little bit faster? The 2023 AMD is like 4 to 5 times faster than the 10 year old Xeon. And that is a big step up because every generation the steps are like sometimes 5, 10, maybe 20% and but always small steps. So. In my opinion, you should never 
upgrade to the next generation but always skip two or three or sometimes four steps and just buy uh, a system with an uh, like medium range video card and uh, after two years upgrade it to a faster video card and then you get more life out of the rest of the system and that saves a bit of money and you, with the new video card you have a lot of performance because the video card is in some situations 10 times faster. The Xeon is the same generation like an i7 3077K. So that is around 10 generations behind the AMD. So that is a lot of generations that I skipped because the 10 core Xeon is so enormously powerful for back in the days. But nowadays it shows its age and it's not so good anymore for like the high performance apps like video editing or like the latest games. It now shows its age. But I think three years ago if you compared it then it was still a really good performing CPU. Only if you look at the motherboard design, the Xeon is DDR3 and we have now DDR5. So in terms of memory speed, they make huge steps in terms of storage and the M.2 SSDs, they made huge steps. So 550 megabyte per second SATA SSD versus 7300 megabyte per second M.2s. That's an enormous step up. Also on the Xeon you had only two SATA 600 ports and the rest SATA 300. So SATA was even not so important back in the days. <laughs> I think the generations after that had every port SATA 600. So was it worth it to spend 4000 euros on the AMD? Yeah. In terms of video card, no. It's simply 1496 euros for an RTX 4080 is insanely expensive and crazy and stupid. But in terms of the CPU, that was only 600 euros and is actually a really good performance high end chip. I think it's a great price. The CPUs made huge steps with all the cores and the cache and the whole platform around it. And the motherboard was 400 and 30 euros it's expensive but with all the connectivity and I think it's a decent price because it has a 10 gig uh, network port so that saves me 100 uh, uh, euros and a PCI slot that helps so that makes it a 300 euro motherboard and for a 300 euro motherboard with all that features I think it's a good price and the CPU and the motherboard are like consumer workstation grade. If you compare it, you can compare it to the workstation class hardware of the Xeon with the Supermicro motherboard. The SSDs in the AMD are two 4 terabyte with digitals and I paid around 300 euro each for it. I think that's a really solid price. I think there's no need for any mechanical drives in any workstation or gaming PC. Just go full SSDs, it's pretty cheap. And also 96 gigabyte of memory for around 300 euros. I think it's a perfectly fine deal. And the fractal design case was 130 euros. The power supply was a bit above 200 euros. And in general, the whole mix of the system is ju just in balance. So only the video card is crazy expensive, but the rest is in line with each other and makes a really nice configuration. So what do you like to see what I uh, can do with the Xeon? Maybe I can make it into uh, my live streaming box in my studio or install Linux on it and explore that more. Uh, yeah, let me know what you love to see of it. It's not a uh, server motherboard, it does the VGA on board. So I don't think it's suitable for that kind of stuff. But as a workstation it's great hardware and it uh, deserves some videos. So if you like to support me you can support me monthly on Patreon and get access to my awesome Discord server where you 
already could uh, see all the benchmark results. And uh, you can uh, check out all the parts of the AMD system with Amazon affiliated links. And thanks for watching.